Broadcasting live from Youngville, North Carolina and Ontario, Canada, this is Got Mead Live, a weekly show where Vicki Rowe and A.J. Aramitz bring you the mead news, meadery info, and mead-making discussions from all over, talking with mead makers, mead owners, industry mavens, and influencers. This is Got Mead Live, a weekly podcast about mead and the people who love it and where the mead world is going. And now here are your hosts, Got Mead owner, Vicki Rowe, and mead and wine maker, A.J. Airmans. Live from the den of the Pucky, Puppies of the Apocalypse, which is this week still in Michigan, uh, Melbourne in Oz, and the Bunny Pen in Ottawa, <laughs> Canada... It's it's got me live. That's right. Hamish is in Sydney right now. Oh, that's right. That's right. And Sydney in Oz. Sorry, Hamish. I forgot. Uh, in a pub. In a pub, and not drinking. Uh, welcome to the sh- <laughs> welcome to the show. And uh, let's make things happen here. Uh, we're taking a little sidestep today. Uh, I know we're doing our um, awesome meat makers. In the in, uh, you know in the home in the home meat making side of things, but I had a month or so ago gotten a call from Oliver Winery, and Oliver Winery has uh, been around for quite a while uh, since the '60s, and uh, they've been making meads since the early '70s. So they're one of the oldest meads uh, in the United States, one of the oldest professional meads in the United States. So uh, it's it's pretty cool. This guy's been making mead for over 40 years. And the mead that he makes is called Camelot Mead. Some of you may have had it. It's Oliver, Oliver Winery in uh, Indiana. And uh, the owner, uh, Professor William Oliver, is going to come on and talk to us uh, about his mead today. And they reformulated, which is why they contacted me. They reformulated the mead. So I've got a bottle here, and I'm drinking it. And it's actually pretty darn good. Um, but anyway, so he's, a, he's actually a lawyer and, and uh, a college professor who started winemaking as a hobby back in the 60s. So like us, you know, he started out as, a, hey, I can make this stuff, and he did. And the hobby turned into, ended up becoming a professional winery, and he was apparently pretty good at it because their wine is pretty popular, and it's uh, shipped, you know, all over the place. So... Um, you know, and the Camelot Mead he's been making since the early 70s, uh, just a year after he got his uh, license. He was actually instrumental in passing legislation that allowed for the creation of small wineries in Indiana, which that was at the time something needed happening. So the Indiana Small Winery Act was passed in 1971, and then Oliver Winery opened in 1972. And then uh, he started making the Camelot Mead about that time, and apparently it just took off, and it's actually been their biggest seller this entire time, which just goes to show you mead is totally awesome. Um, and they aren't just some stodgy old winery, you know, that says, well, I'll just make mead because, look, you know, I can cash in on this thing. Uh, first of all, he was there before there was anything to cash in on, and um, they make making mead. He does ciders, a whole bunch of really fun, fruit-forward wines. So, um, you know, I mean, they, 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 aren't, they don't really take themselves too seriously in terms of you know what they make they just have fun with it and they're in 18 they're selling into 18 states now so uh they contacted us to uh see did we want to try the wine and i of course said yes duh and (laughs) so they shipped me a couple bottles one of which i really needed to ship to aj before i left and i forgot so i'll have to get it to her afterwards but um I'm, I'm drinking it right now, and it's really good. They reformulated just this year after making it for all this time. So it's kind of reformulating for a new generation. It's brighter and a little less sweet, and it's just a, a lot more lively than it was before. I mean, it was good before, but it's, it's better now. So um, we're looking forward to seeing, you know, what he's got to say about, you know, what his thoughts are on making mead. And uh, I'm kind of curious, you know, how did he find out about mead 40 years ago? And you know, why he got into it and, you know, what he's learned in 40 years of making this mead. You got to figure, you know, he's gone around the mulberry bush a few times, so he's probably got, he's probably got some interesting stuff to say. But, uh, <laughs> Indeed, yeah. no, no mention of a bottle for Hamish, and that's because it costs an arm and a leg to ship to Australia. <laughs> but, you know, I'll talk to him and see what we can do. Um, okay, so. so what are we drinking today? AJ, happy birthday. It's AJ's birthday today, so everybody say happy birthday, AJ, out there in cyberspace. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, uh, AJ. Yeah. Thanks, Hamish. <laughs> um, I am drinking a 
boche that a friend of mine brought me a year ago to my birthday party last year, and I tried to open it to have it a little bit earlier, and then I, I busted the bottle, and so I finally got it open, ran it through a filter. Um, it's got a bit of a sharpness to it that I don't remember from before. It's not too sweet, and it's very caramelly, um, and quite pleasant. It's got a, a really nice mouthfeel, um, and I'm starting with it cold, and I want to see how it develops once it warms up. Cool. Sounds yummy. Yeah, my friend made it with D47, I think. Oh, okay. He's one of my yeast nerd friends. Oh, okay. David Webb says he's drinking a blueberry session mead. One of yours, David, or a commercial? I'm not typing yet. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, drinking, I'm drinking, obviously, Camelot um, mead, and it's, it's like a medium orange blossom, medium sweet orange blossom, a little on the sweet side of medium sweet. And it's uh, just a straight traditional, so clean, light, bright, you know, pure color. There's absolutely no sediment in it whatsoever. And um, it's got, when you first open it, it had like sort of a, me- a really mellow orange blossom nose, but as it opens up, the, the orange blossom just goes pow, you know, and just comes right up and gets you. And mm. it has a full orange blossom flavor um, with just a little acidity in it so it's kind of you know a little bit more balanced than just all this super sweet stuff and it's got uh, a really long orangey finish and you know again just that touch of acid in there it's really bright and it's got a real silky texture to it I really like it um, as it sits you know the orange just gets you know just gets bigger and um, and the flavor just gets brighter so all in all I'd say they did a pretty good job on this thing I like it hmm so yeah, there's a bottle with your name on it, birthday girl. <laughs> what about what about you, Hamish? Are you drinking? I'm not, I'm, I'm not drinking. No. Not, oh, okay. <laughs> you sound very sad. You sound very sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's depressing at times, but um, <laughs> to not be we'll drinking. We'll be having a fast afternoon yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. So Dave says his so, was a session made made with orange blossom honey. Took the words right out of my mouth there, right? <laughs> Sorry, Amish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a um, little bit the the usual housekeeping stuff. You want to listen to us? You can listen to us live on GotMead.com. Just click on Got Mead Live Radio Show. Uh, if you prefer to listen to us after the fact, you can pick us up on iTunes, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, and Spreaker. And uh, we have downloads available on all those sites. And, of course, you can also listen to our show player on our Facebook uh, page at facebook.com slash gotmead. Um, replays are available all the way back to the beginning of the show on Spreaker, iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, Stitcher, and um, TuneIn. So, you know, you can get whichever ones you happen to have missed. On Facebook, you can find us at uh, facebook.com slash gotmead and uh, facebook.com slash groups slash gotmead. Twitter, we are at gotmead now. And uh, if you want to send us questions, just go put your mouse over on gotmead.com, put your mouse over the Got Me Live radio show. And uh, when you do that, there'll be a drop down where you can send in questions. And then, of course, if you want to call us and if. Uh, if um, Skype is being friendly this week and allows us to actually take calls, you can get us at 803-443-MEAD. That's 803-443-6323. Um, and I wanted to say thanks to all the folks that have signed up since last week to become patrons or that have renewed. Thank you very much. Your funds go to support the hardware, software, storage, etc. that goes to making Got Me actually work. So uh, it's much appreciated. Um, and if you do find Got Me useful and you're not yet a patron, I hope you'll consider doing it because it's only $30 a year and you get access to our award-winning recipes in the Got Me patron forums on, on the forum at gotme.com slash forum, which is where you can also sign up for the patron membership and uh, you get, uh, get put into our uh, Got Mead uh, patron Facebook group as well. So we're always adding new things there. There's also a chat function that we have on the forum that you can use if you're a patron. So all the way around, uh, it's, you know, for 30 bucks a year, I think it's worth it. And a lot of other people seem to, too. So thank you to those that have signed up and or have renewed. And uh, hopefully some of you guys will uh, find it worthwhile for you. And uh, we're gonna do our we're gonna do our first plug here. Hey, Miss, you wanna you wanna do the uh, the uh, PSA for Oliver Winery here? 
Sure, I, I can. Uh, I, have I you can got the page up? Do... <laughs> I have the page up. <laughs> <laughs> Not even drinking. <laughs> At Oliver Winery, we believe life is sweet and wine makes it sweeter. The best wines are crafted by real people from quality ingredients. Oliver wines that everyone can enjoy, from classic varietals to crisp apple ciders, sweet experiments, and our refreshing Camelot mead. Find our story at oliverwinery.com. Thank you. Okay, well, we're going to get Mr. Oliver in here, and uh, see what he has to say. Right. I was just looking at his bottle. He's got the most remarkable, uh, complex, detailed uh, artwork on, on the bottle there. With the, oh, yeah. The B Central, and I, I can't even tell what half the other characters are. Hello. On this, Hello, on this Mr. Year. Oliver. Ah. It is. Hi. Who's this? This is Vicky Rowe with GotMead.com. Welcome to GotMead Live. I am so excited to be on your show. I've never done this before. <laughs> We're tickled to have you. <laughs> Absolutely. So do you go, do you go uh, yeah. by William or Bill or Will? I go I go by Bill. Okay. I'm just looking at the uh, the invitation on my calendar said William and uh, no it's it's Bill for sure. Okay. Yeah. My. Yeah. I got an uncle named William and he's Bill as well. So that's cool. All right. Well, uh, welcome to Got Meet Live and you've got myself and um, AJ Ermick. She's up in Canada in Ottawa. Hey. And um, AJ. Hi. <laughs> and uh, Hamish Lucas, and he's in currently in Sydney, Australia, but he's from Melbourne. Good and we're, we're all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our Miami contingent we're, we're so is, <laughs> is laid up, so he's not here tonight. <laughs> yeah, so in Sydney, it is tomorrow sometime. Yeah. It is indeed. It's about 10 past 11 at the moment. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, this is uh, quite the round-the-world uh, group we've got here. We like to think we're pretty worldly. There would be yeah, there would be those who would argue sure. with us. So I'm uh, I'm <laughs> sitting here <laughs> on some level. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here I'm sitting here sipping yeah. on one of the bottles that you sent me, and this is this is it's been a while. Last time I had Camelot was probably 15 years ago. I picked up a bottle when I was I was up north somewhere, and I ran across it. And um, you know we're. Um, yeah, and I hope it's better than fifteen it was fifteen years ago. It is. It is. Uh, you know, you know, we just uh, we just sequentially number our mead batches going back to nineteen seventy two, and I think we're on uh, batch number nine hundred and ten. Oh, geez. So we've made a few. Yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, a lot of learning along the way for sure, for sure. And we I, and I think just... we're in a pretty good place. We were just talking about that. You've been making this mead for over 40 years. 1972, maybe yeah. 45. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that just... Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I'd mean, be happy to share, you know, some of the key things that we've learned over that time, but... Yeah, you know, we're, we're going to be quizzing you, Bill. And honey and, and all that is good. Yeah, well, very good. Yeah, we're totally very good. We were kind of interested, too. Okay, you were getting into Camelot Mead happened when I've been on the mead scene since um, since the uh, mid to late 80s, uh, you know, as far as getting getting involved in it myself and then publicly from, like, the early 90s. But, okay, you've been doing this since 72, and the only mead that I know – that was being produced commercially before Camelot was Chaucer's. And so that means right. you didn't exactly have a lot of examples to work from. So I'm curious, how did you find out about mead and what made you decide you were going to make it, you know? Well, in, in all fairness, it was my father back then. Okay, I was a little kid running around. But uh, so um, my father was, you know, he was one of these guys that would try anything. He had a, just a ton of just, kind of off-the-wall hobbies, uh, you know, winemaking law, which led to the winery, and uh, he was a, sort of a naturally curious guy, and uh, there was a guy... 